That's our top story at 5 o'clock. A pit bull breeder is savagely mauled to death by the very dogs he was raising in Compton. We begin with breaking news in Compton right now where one man is dead after being attacked by several dogs in a backyard. Last Friday, tragedy in a backyard. A 35-year-old father, Dominic Cooper, killed by his dogs. He has three beautiful little girls. Right now at 11, breaking news, a gruesome scene in Compton after a deadly dog attack. 13 dogs seized by animal control officers after a Compton man was mauled to death last week have been euthanized. LA Animal Care says evidence linked those dogs to the attack. The 35-year-old man died after feeding his own pets. Investigators say the dogs were all housed in a single kennel. Surveillance videos show the animals getting into a fight and then attacking the man in his backyard. What a tragic story. Hello, everybody. My name is Andre BGK a Big Gemini Kennels. And and I was recently interviewed by TMZ because I'm a well-known, licensed, responsible breeder. And they wanted to know, was this event preventable and will it be an ongoing problem in the future? So in this video, I want to give you some insight about the news clips that you just seen and the tragic mauling of the gentleman who passed due to his dogs attacking him while he was feeding them in his backyard. Although I greatly appreciate TMZ reaching out to me, Andrea Big Gemini Kennels, to get the viewpoint of a responsible breeder on how the situation could have been avoided, I kind of feel that they directly implicated me by putting my kennel banner next to his deceased body in their thumbnail and circling both. Now, if you guys kind of see the correlation or if you think I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. But I feel like they kind of did that on purpose and insinuated that my kennel has something to do with this man's death. We have zero to do with this man's death at all. We're just here to help. Not to mention that this unfortunate incident occurred during Black History Month. Then TMZ decides to reach out to a well-known, responsible black kennel black owned kennel such as big gemini kennels and then put the deceased black body next to my kennel banner and made a lot of people assume that i was involved i was dead or my dogs were in dog involved with this death i can't tell you how many dms text messages and phone calls i received about whether my dogs were involved with this or not after this tmz article aired during this interview, the interviewer told me that if I wanted an edit done after the fact, they would be happy to do so. However, when I asked them to edit the thumbnail so that my banner didn't appear next to a dead body, they refused to do so, but they did edit the article to make sure it was clear that I wasn't a part of it. Now, before I go any further in this video, I want to say RIP to the 35-year-old father, Dominic Cooper, and his family. He survived by three daughters, three beautiful daughters, and I can only imagine the pain that they're dealing with. My heart goes out to you guys. So R.A.P. Dominic Cooper, much respect from Gemini Kennels. Now my goal in making this video is to educate the public so this never happens again or to show everyone that in my opinion, this was absolutely avoidable. Now during this incident, there were five adult pit bulls involved and eight pit bull puppies involved. The eight puppies were all between two to six months old. Now, as the breeder began feeding his dogs, some of them began fighting over the food. As the dogs began fighting over the food, it was at this point that the breeder, Dominic, tried to interfere and break up the dog fight. At that point, some of the dogs turned on Dominic and began attacking him. His clothes were ripped off and his body was left bloody inside of a kennel where it was later found by his girlfriend. This dog attack was sudden and vicious unexpected. The dog breeder was overwhelmed and defenseless. His severely damaged body was found lying bloody inside of the empty dog kennel next to dog food bowls. Now this incident occurred at seven o'clock on a Thursday night. Unfortunately, his body was not discovered until Friday morning when a white female friend or alleged girlfriend of his came out and discovered the gruesome scene. She called 911 and then had to climb across the kennels in the fence line to escape with the help of rescuers. Barely. One slip and this young lady would have met the same fate. Now TMZ's questions to me about this incident were as follows. The first question I was asked were, are more people scared to purchase or adopt pit bulls because of this incident? The second thing I was asked by TMZ is, is there anything this pit bull breeder could have done differently to avoid being mauled to death by his dogs? 
The third thing I was asked is, will there be any more danger of this happening for future breeders? My answers were as follows. My response to the first question, are people more scared to purchase or adopt pit bulls because of this incident, was as follows. No, I have not seen a difference in the amount of people that are contacting me to buy our dogs. And the reason why is most of the people that are educated about the breed know this is an isolated incident with unique circumstances and nothing that they will have to deal with at all. There are circumstances that led to this. This is not random. And you'll see that as we go a little bit further. Now, the second question, in my opinion, is the most important question. And the reason why I decided to make this video and not just let the article on TMZ that I interviewed to create speak for itself. I think this needs to be said. Number two, they asked me, is there anything this pit bull breeder could have done differently to avoid being mauled to death by his dogs? Now, I'm not here to victim blame at all. But yes, there are a host of things that could have been done differently that would have not led to this event. He would have never been attacked or harmed by these dogs at all if these things were followed. Now, speaking as an experienced breeder that has 16 dogs of his own, very large dogs, and have always had dogs that I've been breeding for the last 15 years, I can tell you the first thing that I would have not have done is had 13 dogs running together collectively. That is asking for problems. You are creating an atmosphere when you introduce food around 13 dogs that will most likely lead to a dog fight. Now, if you don't have control over these dogs and they begin to fight, you now have a pack mentality that can turn on you. You should only have that amount of dogs running together if they're extremely well trained and you're a super dominant alpha. And even then, I would not suggest that you collectively put 13 dogs together and attempt to feed them. I think that is a recipe for disaster. Also, in one of the news clips, a lady claimed that he had all of the dogs living in the same kennel. 13 dogs living in one kennel is insane. When I feed my dogs, I usually do it at the most two, maybe three, but usually only two at a time. Most of the time, probably even one. I would never try to attempt to feed 13 dogs at the same time. That was a drastic mistake. Another important aspect is I breed for temperament. My dogs are known to have the most stable, family-oriented temperaments out of all the large dogs that are being bred right now. And there's a reason for that. I am always looking at the temperament and testing the temperament of my dogs. If they don't line up with my breeding program, they got to go, right? I don't allow any food aggression in my dogs, even starting as puppies. I will purposefully take their bowl away during mid-eating. I will reach in and take that bowl away from them. If they show any sign of food aggression at that point, I automatically submit and dominate that dog. If it does not allow me to submit or dominate it when it's showing food aggression, I will seek formal training. If that doesn't work, I will call that dog. And by call, I do mean euthanize. If you're not willing to euthanize a dog, then you're not breeding for temperament. My program must have a stable temperament, even if that means a dog or two does not make the cut. So what I'm going to do right here is include a clip from a previous video where I show how I handle food aggression at the BGK Ranch. Take notes. I actually recorded and released this video in June of last year. That's how long I've been preaching this, way before this incident. Food aggression is never to be allowed, and it's very, very dangerous that he gets aggressive when my cousin gives him food he'll nip at his hand or bite at his hand if my cousin reaches towards the food bowl he'll show aggression and basically try to be dominant over the food bowl now that's another thing about submitting your dog you should be able to reach in that bowl and feed them from your hand and i showed my cousin right now how to do that and i want to show you guys what happened as my cousin tried to feed him and then you'll see what happened when i tried to feed him then we'll get back to the submission this is all about the same thing being a dominant alpha with your dogs some trainers say it's not real I'm not a trainer, but I know enough to know that it's a very real thing. You need to be your alpha. You need to be the alpha. And the dogs will rec recognize that energy when they see it. So the video you're going to see now is my cousin trying to feed them and how they react to his hand coming into their area and around their food bowl. Do it again. 
No. Do it again. No. No. Okay, so that's my cousin presenting them with food, and you can see Rampage being a little bit of an ass, being a little bit food aggressive, not going to overkill. He's not trying to bite them, but he's definitely nipping and showing a little food dominance, and that's not acceptable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach my hand right in there immediately after. My cousin did this literally seconds before me. So immediately after, I'm going to reach my hand in. I'm going to tell him no one time, and then confidently go for the food bowl and start eating out of the food bowl, quote unquote, with my hand, and eventually hand feeding Rampage, so he can know I'm an alpha, I'm accepted in your food bowl, I'm accepted in your kennel, I'm accepted in the main house, in the yard, no matter where you are, I am the alpha, but I'm not trying to hurt you. Again, you do not have to hit your dogs, watch this. He initially challenges my hand, I give him one firm no, then I reach for the bowl, no hesitation. I'm dipping my hand in and out of the bowl to simulate me eating from his food bowl. As the saying goes, they should never bite the hand that feeds them. As you can see what the results were, he's eating out of my hand. That's the way it's supposed to be. Never accept food aggression or food dominance in your dogs, ever. Break that early. As a breeder, we are never to allow food aggressive or human aggressive behavior in our dogs without immediately correcting that behavior and letting them know that it's unacceptable. Now this will not stop your dog from being a good guard dog, but it will stop any attacks on you, your family, your loved one, or your friends. Another thing that I always do is I always keep a deterrent handy to stop a dog fight immediately. It's not so much for my protection, but to stop the dogs from fighting in that instant. And what I like to use is bear mace or stun baton Either one of those will work really good. My preference is the bear mace if we're outside in an open space like he was in an open backyard where I don't have to worry about the fumes being closed in with me and I'm sneezing too. That bear mace ends that fight immediately. That would have dispersed those dogs. Game over. Fight over. Everybody's done. That's it. Right? And also a stun baton is good to have. If you're going to be a pit bull kennel, keep those around just so those dogs don't harm each other. It's not necessarily for your protection, but if there's ever a fight, you want that fight to end immediately, that instant. When you see it, it's over. And the best thing about these two deterrents is although they may cause a dog temporary discomfort or pain, there is no long lasting damage. They're not injured at all and the dog fight is done. And the last thing I want to say I didn't see all the news networks talk about this, but one of the news networks actually interviewed a lady that said that house had been empty for over a year and that this gentleman, Dominic, was just coming and going when he could to take care of those dogs. Now, I don't know if that's accurate or not, but you can see it here. But one neighbor in particular actually told me that she's familiar with the house and that specifically those dogs have been there for a while but she says that she believes no one lives in the home and that a man often comes back to the home a man who used to live in the home often comes back to the area to check on the dogs periodically but again that she believes no one lives in the home and that a man moved out of the home where the dogs are about a year or so ago now with that being said i would make sure that i am well socialized with my dogs i know my dogs very well i'm with them every day all the time so i don't have to worry about their familiarity with me or their understanding of me as an alpha right they have to respect you as an alpha if they do not respect you as an alpha you can be challenged and if you're challenged in front of the pack and lose that challenge in front of the pack it can get real bad real quick if these tips are followed i guarantee you Nothing like what happened to this gentleman, Dominic, will ever happen to a breeder that uses these techniques. I've been using it for over a decade. There's been no attacks and will be no attacks at my kennel. All right. I guarantee you that. Now, to answer TMZ's final question, will there be more danger of this happening in future breeders? No, not if they watch a video like this or get a good dog trainer around them or a good dog man around them that knows how to handle these dogs. If they're properly handled and you're breeding for temperament, the odds of this happening are just as good as the lottery, right? Most likely never going to happen. 
Now, I hope this video is interesting and I hope even more importantly that it helped inform you guys about how to interact and deal with multiple dogs as a dog breeder because this is important stuff. I don't want to see anybody else injured, damaged, or killed by pit bulls or any other breed. This doesn't just apply to pit bulls. This apply, applies to large breed dogs in general. Now, I produce some of the biggest, largest, family-friendly dogs that has been seen and as you can see, my systematic approach is the reason why. I leave nothing to chance. I cover all angles, all right? I am proud that Big Gemini Kennels is known for that. And we always have our saying, quality matters. I'm going to end the video with this. If y'all see what I see in the thumbnail that TMZ chose to use, please click the link in the description right into them and tell them to fix that and do a positive piece, a positive PR piece about Big Gemini Kennels. Because I don't feel that's right, but maybe I'm wrong. Y'all let me know. Tell me in the comments. And if you feel it, click that link in the description and contact TMZ directly. Thank you. Andre BGK, and I'm out.